references. We oh, no, there it. you go. Yes. You had that motherfucking mute button pushed. I had all the mute buttons pushed. it down. Pushed. Mute point. An issue which no satisfactory answer is found. This is all a moot point. The meatloaf! We want it now! The meatloaf! Ma, the meatloaf! Like a cow's opinion. I've had it with this dump! Jobs. Our, our pets, pets are falling off. This is all a move point. Doesn't matter. Yo, what up, everybody, and welcome to the Mood Points Podcast. Not even gonna let the beat ride at all. Nope, just gonna not at all. Right in. I'm ready to go, baby. After our pets' heads are falling off. I know. I figured once we broke the fourth wall there and let people know that it's not just recordings that you're also listening to live people. We might as well just. I mean, that is it. one of the greatest clips of all time, to be honest. And, and it makes no sense, which is why it makes all the sense in the world to have in the introduction for the show. I know. The other ones have something to do with like a moot point or something like that. And then there's Meatloaf, which doesn't really. That's Miles also. Just, meatloaf! Yeah, that's, I mean, that's just another good. classic. Yeah, just it's just for one. no reason. Mm hmm. Man, you know what I've been. Uh, by the way, this is the Moot Points podcast. Yeah, I'm what Brian up? Moot. This is Patrick Moot. Yeah. I, I jumped on top of you about. I'm the like, host. I know, but I jumped in and, and didn't let you intro the show because I thought yeah. maybe you should let. You know, the classic Nirvana smells like teen spirit. Maybe let the beat ride a little bit. Maybe, you know, uh, do that radio thing where you let the beat ride for a second. <laughs> See? Or I'll just do that radio thing where I nail drops. <laughs> that is a thing. It. That's a radio thing you could do. Yeah, I can do um, that. Where do you want to start today? How much pain we're both in? Or I'm in more pain than you. Um, Brian's in more pain than I did. I, I don't know who was following us this weekend, but I I'm had... in grown man pain right now. Yeah, it be, it, grown man pain also means because the pain really doesn't have a source because you can't really call walking nope, just a hurts source everywhere. of pain. Hurts <laughs> you everywhere. Just, you no, just no, hurt it, from like being the old. bottom of my feet hurt. The back of my right knee hurts. Well, like my lower back hurts. So for those who aren't aware, and you can check both our Instagrams, I think, to see. I have the story saved on mine. I mean, how dare you not be aware, though? But Let's I know. I know. If you're right listening now. to this, you probably keep tabs on us. But yeah. we walked from 12 miles from it. Hollywood to Santa Monica on Sunday. 12, so yesterday. I, I walked close to almost 14. Yeah. Total. I, I'm going to blame... That extra like mile and a half, two miles that I have from walking from my apartment to meet you at the Waffle on Sunset to then slam some mimosas and start walking. I will say – I'm blaming that for my, my pain, my extra pain. But one thing I realized yesterday is, man, if you walk 12.1, 12.2, 13 miles – Man, you can put down a bunch of booze and not be that drunk. Uh, you can put it down. I mean, we see, were I was we were on... sauced. I was sauced, but it wasn't like if I look back at like I, I I did I indiscriminately drank everything put in front of me from mimosas to beers to vodka sodas to shots of Jameson. Well, with there was no f's. Given. There was some. I had to keep it on the on the level just because I was already dehydrated. I'm going into chemo this week. Yeah, you like can't, I have you to can't, be uh, face it. You can't have no. Words. So I kept it reasonable. Like I was keeping a, a heavy tally on what it was, but I mean, 45 minutes in between beers is a lot of walking. It's a lot of walking it off with like a bunch. Well, of... but in fairness, I didn't think we were actually going to make it out of Hollywood. So we started walking in the rain. We walked to our first stop, which is supposed to be the Hudson grill from the waffle. The Hudson grill is closed. closed. Inexplicably <laughs> still closed, which has got to be costing them. It's got to be serious. So this, the Hudson Grill... When they closed originally, it said for renovations. Yeah, so the Hudson Grill is on a very iconic corner. It's Crescent Heights and Santa Monica Boulevard, like in the heart of West Hollywood. It's, it's, it's just a, a legendary brunch spot. It's a really cool place. It's, it looks like an old train car, kind of. Um, it's got like that kind of design. It also looks like a tree house a little bit, too, because it's got trees that grow through the middle of it. It's just a really cool place, and it's been closed now for almost two months. And I, we did not check that before. Well, we why, and what's funny is that we had both been there last time it was closed. Yeah, we right. already knew it was that's closed. Right. We just didn't double check. As soon as I saw nobody parked in front of it, I was like, that's closed. Yeah, We're going to have to closed. keep walking. We so audibled we went, went to, the, to Barney's Beanery. Yeah, the world famous Barney's Beanery on Route 66. It is a great – Barney's Beanery is great at the airport. It's great in Pasadena. It's great in Glen. It's great. Um, yeah, but we then, went then we went to Barney's Beanery twice this weekend because we went then on our Friday. next <laughs> stop. We did. Then our next stop was Pump on Santa Monica Boulevard. Now, for you Vanderpump Rules fans, that is Lisa's kind of. It's not her flagship, but it is her flagship. Her first restaurant was Sir, but Pump is the one that she really started. Uh, when hilarious. the show took off, it's a hilarious it's, place. It it's is, all hot guy servers who wear like these tight pink I shirts mean, with like these ties that are like half tied. 
There's not a those guys. You can take all their servers, put them together, and and none of them have eaten a carb in the last five years. These dudes yeah. are unbelievably attractive. They're gluten free, baby. I wanted to play a game, and I really still want to do this because they wear these pink button up shirts that are form fitting. And not stretchy. Well, and they tiny. look like what, like like polyester. And they only have like three buttons. Linen. So yeah. they, they button like at your belly button and then And just I want to just up. see how I would shred through one of those things like the Incredible Hulk trying to put one on. Like just trying to put one on, not even trying to break the shirt. Just the um, the amount of it yoga. It would look position. like a pink shirt tattoo on you. Yeah. It wouldn't the, even there would well, just be the be amount testing of, the tinsel strength. The amount of yoga positions I'd have to um to form to even get like my joints and shoulders loose enough to get into those things would be hysterical um we ended up being there for well i don't know an entire pitcher of mimosa so that guy totally set us up too because that pitcher was huge but it's cheaper than uh it's it was. cheaper than getting regular mimosas yeah, he, yeah no it was i mean he was he, he was right if we got three eight dollar mimosas it's 24 bucks 24 and the pitcher is 30 and yeah. the pitcher is like eight mimosas per person and the pitcher is huge. huge he brought it over and i was like this is so bad this is such a bad idea yeah and it was pouring it was rain pouring down rain so at that point too it did look like we weren't gonna continue and i was just kind of i was starting to get antsy too because really like my goal in it was to get to santa monica like to get it done you know i didn't want to sit at any place too long i was getting anxious like i just wanted to keep moving man keep right. walking it, it's just insane it well because that point it's like i don't you were antsy pantsy yesterday and i was just like hey man i kind of chalked up into all of sunday to walking 12.1 miles because you want to start at 10 a.m and be done at like three and i was like that's fine but in my opinion if yeah, we're we gonna be drinking and walking Let's just do it all day. Well, my thing was, yeah, I just, I was gonna, I was planning on doing less drinking, so I got it. I'd get antsy. I'd like sit there, slam water, maybe have a beer, and then be ready to roll, and then be ready to rock and roll. I mean, we we went from there. We ended up stopping at uh, Cafe Amici because we had to. It was pouring rain on yeah, Sunset. That Bo- was when on Santa Monica Boulevard. Because that's really what my biggest concern was, too, was walking in the rain and getting sick. Because if well, yeah, I get you, sick, then they postpone my treatment. Yeah, and, and you don't want to drag out. I mean, you, no. we'll get to that in a little bit, but you have your last round of chemo starts on Tuesday. It starts tomorrow. Tomorrow. Or today. Well, it depends on when you're listening. That's yeah. why I said Tuesday. Or in three weeks. That's why I said Tuesday. Month. Yeah, Tuesday. Um, so just Tuesday. Let's go with Tuesday. So well, that's what I tried to do from the beginning. Uh, but yeah, that would be a real bummer if you got up there and you had a cold and they're like, yeah, we can't actually do this right now. So we'll just put it off a week. So you've got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then mm-hmm. chemo is done. And then I'm done with chemotherapy for right. the foreseeable future, knock on wood. Well, let's get to that in a second, but we haven't finished our walk yet because we saw at, from Cafe Amici, we went to the Beverly Hilton, which I got to be honest, Beverly Hilton, shout out to you. I fangirled a little bit. They favorited my tweet. Because they, they were they liking our stuff yeah, they on liked, Instagram. Yeah, they liked my Instagram story. I mean, that I, I immediately followed them that on I Instagram. I mentioned them in. You guys nailed it, Beverly Hilton. We went there. I forgot the Grammys were on Sunday. So there's a bunch of music industry people that I probably have had some sort of interaction with right. from like a record label or we're something. Just we just all wet walking around. Just, yeah, I smell like a, like a wet dog, and we're drinking at the bar, and we ordered a little bit of food there. We needed the food because the last two legs from the Beverly Hilton to Philly West Bar and Grill, which was amazing. The most amazing dive bar I've seen in a long time in yeah. Los Angeles. There was there were, those were long stretches. And then Busby's West, it was like and an then hour of walking. the Cheesecake Factory on Which the Santa does Monica Pier. Which not exist. I thought that was too good to be true. I know. I why did it say we checked um, numerous times and it said there was a Cheesecake Factory on the pier and I figured it was where um, what's the the Bubba Gump Shrimp because there's a Bubba Gump Shrimp out yeah. there. I figured maybe Bubba Gump's was gone and. And uh, the other one took over. Bosworth is now ripping he's, into the bed, making he's noise. making an appearance today. Being in, he's uh, always got to make an appearance. Is that what you think, Boz? Thanks for he's the always got to like dig around in the bed for no reason and then shake, shake and hey, make a noise. St- stop digging in the mattress. He's not going to find anything in there. No. At least we assume my friend's crashing here in this room and he's just ripping his clothes to shreds. Yeah, doesn't and care. He's rolling all on. over his. Looks like what was clean clothes until Boz. He just kicked his pillows off the bed. I kind of like doing play by play of Bosworth destroying okay. a bed. He's now How staring are you at that us, small? wagging his tail, just completely you, destroying you the bed. You just knocked all the pillows off the bed, and you're a dog that weighs 26 pounds. No, don't don't call him fat. He's like 22. 22. Look at that. He's such a dirty. He always looks like he just woke up, which he always did just wake up. He was sleeping like a, a nice I little guy. We got ago. derailed. So we did think that there was a cheesecake factory at the end of Santa Monica Pier, which kind of sucks because the whole walk, we hit the latter parts of the walk. I we, really wanted we a were, piece of cheesecake. I did too. I, I really wanted a victory cheesecake. cheesecake so bad. It made so much sense 
to have victory cheesecake after a 12 mile walk we didn't get to have victory cheesecake yeah, because there was no cheesecake factory factor. nachos that were pretty medium they were okay but i'm gonna google it right now because i really think that there's still a, it still says there's a so, cheesecake factory in mm-hmm. santa monica so what we've decided to call this is walk it off and what we're thinking we're gonna do is quarterly. So every three months we're gonna have a walk it off from different, Hollywood. Yeah, we do a different charity each time. It's yeah. kind of a walk it off. I, I'd get like people to figure to go out how with we you get per mile donation. Yeah, raise money at some point. If I don't you know get how an we'd... injury and can't make it the rest of the way, I did at one point stumble and roll my ankle. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, Hill. this one says the Cheesecake Factory is not on the pier. Now it says that. Oh, but it's it says it's on the promenade. But whatever, it did say it was. At the oh, pier. I knew that. Now that I think about it, I think I did too. I but, totally knew that. But whatever. Okay, that's what I that's that's my rebuttal. Whatever. How does that feel? That um, good. So yeah, we stopped at some Mexican joint out there. So that was the walk, and my feet hurt, my walk back hurts, the my next legs one hurt. We're gonna do hashtag in, walk it off like, LA. What May, June, something like that? I think we decided on April. That might be too soon. May okay, fine, May. Yeah. Whatever, dude. The end of May. I don't care. Quarterly. You can figure it out. That's your job. You figure it out. It's your it's your fundraiser. Sure is my fundraiser. It's also my show. So we're moving on to the next topic. Whoa. I know. I just took it. I just took the power back. I just took my show back. I'm the captain now. I am um, the captain. You need that sound drop. So basically what we're gonna talk about now is I've been getting a lot of people asking me about updates. Because I kind of stopped doing some of the video updates that I was doing before. Well, you've been working on the documentary. Because I've been working probably. on the doc, and it wasn't productive to be working on... Too these, much these, content. Yeah, too much content. And I don't want to show everything right away. Like, we're doing a well, documentary... Then why would I watch the documentary if I follow you on yeah, Instagram stories and I saw the whole damn movie? Yeah, the documentary is just about us walking to Santa Monica. That's a pretty good... Old, I mean, I'm glad we have, we have some video saved from that, I'm sure. Yeah. At one point in time in that documentary, we, we found a guy... Who his wife was on Facetime and she was about to give yeah birth. she was about to give labor and she in labor she was about to give labor to someone and she and was like mortified that this guy was smoking a cigarette out in front of the hospital and he's like look she's on Facetime and she was like you know sitting in her hospital again it wasn't like we saw you know the breaching of the crown or anything Ugh. I don't even know what that means Ugh. <laughs> it sounds terrible God. but we didn't see it and he was like yo my 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 girl's gonna give birth we'll have that video on the documentary yes we will um. So people have been asking for updates, um, and I figure it's a good time to give one just because I have been a little bit. I mean, I, I, on Instagram stories, there's stuff up there all the time, but that stuff doesn't stay up forever, so I think some people are missing them. But basically, I am on round – so Tuesday will be round 12 of 12. Seems so crazy fast to me, and I know you're going to say <laughs> it wasn't fast. You're crazy. Yeah, no, it feels like it's been an eternity. But I, So I started September 12th was my first treatment. And I will, on Tuesday, get the three, or basically the two different chemicals that they give me, and then... When you have your little walk, your little pack, your take-home pack. Yeah, and then I have and then I have the third chemical that they give me that they put on a 48-hour pack that I have to wear in a, like Which, a little thing. That is the pack. worst it's one. It's so right? bad. Yeah, it sucks just to have to wear that the whole time, because I can't take a bath, I can't shower, I can't really... You know, I you just can't sleep. Can't it? really sleep. Like it's yeah. uncomfortable. Makes noise all the time. Plus, you feel uncomfortable and like shit. Every once in a while, it's like, Yee. yeah, it makes like a noise. So for me, it seems like just yesterday was your first round of chemo. Well, it doesn't feel like that for me. It okay. feels like it's been. It, I don't even. It feels like I've had cancer forever. Like literally, it's only been a year. In May, it'll be a year since I found that, out. I mean, May that's 17th. still a pretty long time to have anything. Oh my god, it's to be mm, dealing with an ailment. I mean, I can't. The the whole thing with it is that I'm realizing is like one of the hardest parts about the whole thing has been trying to keep my mind occupied like i'm getting so bored i can't imagine being a little kid and being like because i feel like a kid sometimes and it's like can't go out and play again today it's like damn it i just want to play i just want to go outside well, it's, it's just the weird part about these rounds of chemo these two week rounds is that you do it from tuesday to thursday then you're sick friday saturday depending on how your body's reacting maybe sunday then you got like four days of oh man maybe i'm not thinking about chemo and then Come Sunday, you're like, man, Boom. Monday, t- 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 crap. Right back so into it. So basically, that. like, 10 out of 14 days are ruined by chemo. You have four days of non, yeah. non-chemo non ruining fun. 
and it's really taken a toll. Like it does have a collective effect. So like I'm more tired. I'm more worn out. I'm feeling just like so anxious all the time. Brian's seen it. Like we'll be like trying to watch a movie and I'll just be like, like pacing. sit down. <laughs> like, how like, are you watching a movie? Like I watched this? a movie standing the other day. Just I mean, standing up. The, he bought like a desk that he can stand at. I'm like, just sit down. You're no, fine. I can't. I just, I need, like, I'm so used to being self-motivated and out there in the world doing stuff. It's like been so hard to just like sit down and chill. Not going to lie. At first, kind of awesome. Cause I just well, was I remember like, we talked about on on my morning radio show what can Pat binge watch, and I bet if we looked at that list, you probably haven't nailed any of them. You've done a lot of horror movies. I've watched, I've rewatched a lot of movies. Horror movies. Yes. I said horror. Horror. Not horror movies. Those are different movies. But you probably watched a few of those too. I watched a few of those. <laughs> Every once in a while. Chemo makes your boners weird, man. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Please explain. You can't just throw that out. You know, lob that out here and just aggressive. not aggressive. You mean like just throbbing? <laughs> oh, know. don't use the word throbbing. You no. Weirdo. Honestly, at first there was like a weird period of time where it was like my body was reacting. Like morning wood was just crazy. Yeah, like hurt. Like it'd been <laughs> it that so way. It, it'd like be it was like gorged. You were thinking about that. You were basically living that commercial with the side effects of the yeah. boner meds. Like, like we have the, a consulted doctor after four hours. You're like, yeah, I woke up and I'd had this yeah. for four hours the, and it just hurts. Like when the boner med guy with the smile stops smiling because he's like, oh god, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. It's engorged. How do I get this to go away? No, I know. It's like it would like hurt to like slam it in a door hurt to like relieve myself. Oh, you um, would? Well, so you're just admitting you to have to. admitting to like. You, you Brian, get, I used you have to the rub term one out to relieve get it. myself. This is such a worse word than just rub one out. Relieve no, sounds know. like it just sounds medical. You had to, you had to, <laughs> did you have to express it? <laughs> yeah. I had to express, express my chemo my, boner. I had to express my boner glands. Oh, God. <laughs> How did we get here? I don't know. You brought it up, man. I did it. You I brought did this it up. to myself. Um, but there's been so the side effects really have caught up to me and I am exhausted and just like so over it. Like even right now, I'm about to go into my last week of chemotherapy. I'm not excited about it. People keep being like, oh, my God, you must be so excited. And really, I'm just kind of like conflicted. Like I, I'm ready for it. First of all, it's hard to be excited about having to do chemo at all. Right. But even it's if it's lot, just if, if there was around, though, isn't this the one you're most excited for? The, I mean, clearly, the, duh. honestly, you know what's weird about this is like there's a combination, and I've been talking to my therapist about this. Oh, that's right. Pat is doing therapy, everybody. Yes, I'm doing therapy. Positive thing to do. It's a good thing. Everyone should do therapy. It's you know, I, like I'm not gonna sit here and say that it's game changer, like life changing or anything like that. But I will say that um, I've gotten to the bottom of some things. Or what's your most kind of shocking figure. revelation from therapy? Um, like in terms of what you didn't think. Clearly, you have cancer. Yeah, that's a real bummer. To 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 hey, put it massive commitment issues real bummer yeah yeah but that's the thing it's like <laughs> then also dad went to prison yeah. monster bummer big bummer you guys haven't had the greatest relationship you and him yeah also a bummer mm -hmm. big bummer and then so you have those things that are easy to kind of hang your hat on like oh yeah I've got issues my dad went to prison and I have cancer like yeah. let's talk about it and then she's like no 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 you also are a commitment phobe. Yeah, well, sure. No, 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 let's talk about cancer and stuff. No, no, no. What about the penis documentary? <laughs> Can we talk about that? <laughs> talk about some of those other, how about we talk about my career and stuff and like oh, and God. what I think is failures? And they're like, no, 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 no. Like what you think is the thing that's a problem isn't really that big of a problem. The other problem is the thing. You're like, oh, thanks. I'm glad yeah. I came by. You just added another problem just, to my uh, prison can't dad just, uh, cancer. We can't just audible walk. the chemo boners right now. Yeah, can we talk just talk about, about expressing else? my boner gland? Oh, God. Um, yeah, that, that would be the most was, was just how, how kind of massive my, I always thought that I was like afraid of relationships because I'm so dedicated to the job to no, work that's always a convenient and to getting excuse. through it. Yeah, no, I'm realizing that it's like, I'm afraid of it for a completely different reason. Yeah. Well, you've heard Mike, Mike Posner, people would give me crap about the, that song, um, a pill in Ibiza mm -hmm. by Mike Posner. If you listen to that song, it literally nails commitment, uh, relationship issues. He basically says, like... That Brian gets his therapy from Mike Posner songs. No, I'm just saying... I mean, Mike Posner's an amazing dude. Yeah, like, he he's is big. Really Brian's a big fan. Man crush. Him and Post Malone now. Man crush. Um, no, he's got a line. What Sorry. is that? Just keep going. Man crush sound effects? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, no, he's got a line that he says... Uh, uh, like, in the next morning, he'll cut him, he cuts the girls loose and works his excuse... Yeah. But the truth is, truth is, he can't open up. <laughs> Loud luxury, my guys. <laughs> Brian Man Crush. Ride in the six. Brian's Man Crush. Want to ride in the six. I mean, how would you not have a Man Crush in these guys? Every time I go to Vegas, they tell me, 
come hang out in the DJ. Yeah. But last time I was taking shots with Tiesto. Like, Tiesto is worth $80 million. Yeah, he's a brand. Like, he's, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I, I, like, never in my wildest dreams I think I get to a point in my life where I'm taking shots with I don't with think Tiesto. They, I, they probably won't forget it either. I'm like, remember when that giant guy came back here and took all those shots? With I got to be honest. I did tell him the story about how whenever I'm, like, talking about Man Crush or something, they play that you on our show play Body by Loud Luxury. And I'm like, yeah, because I got a man crushing you. And they had this weird moment where, like, we don't really know how to take that. <laughs> And then one of them goes, Joe goes, but it's like, that's a good man crush. I'm like, it is Joe. Exactly, it Joe. It is definitely Joe. Um, how did we get onto this? How did we get onto I don't know. Mike we're just Posner. kind of meandering. Oh, yeah, we were talking about Mike Posner. Oh, yeah, because I said the, the line in his song is that uh, he has another girl at every night, and she, he cuts him loose in the morning and works his excuse, but the truth is he can't open up in his life. Yeah. And that's so true because we do have a tendency. I did this for years. Oh, I don't want to be in a relationship because... I, I am doing comedy. I'm doing. I'm, I'm working. I'm working. I want to commit. I can't do both. And that's that is complete ass nine crap. And it took me. Are you getting, sure? Yes. Like it is. sure, sure. You, but it is like your really problem. Sure? You're using it as an excuse. And here's the thing. Here's I how know. I know. Because it took me marrying a legitimately medical psychopath and having that blow up in my face <laughs> in another uh, side of this country. And then having to decide to myself, like, at what point in time am I going to stop using being busy as an excuse not to, like, have a relationship or open up my life or share my life? And it it basically is a decision you have to make. And it, it I'd be lying if I said it's easy. Mm. I'm in a long-distance relationship, man. It stinks. I've been in trouble a few times for questionable online liking behavior when you <laughs> like Instagram girls with big butts pictures. When you accidentally. No, I like those slips. on purpose. I don't know why I was. That is a funny thing, I think. When guys like stuff, like what's the psychology behind you liking a bunch of Instagram well, it's like, girls' I, I, photos? Because like you want the... to be you want to be valid you want to be validated with like, you know, like why I like when the why I fangirled when the Beverly Hilton liked a post. I was like, oh my god, oh they noticed me. Yeah. Oh they noticed me in this world. Yeah. You just wanted to let those big butts know that they've been noticed in this world. No, nah, I wanna well one, I wanna be noticed by the big butts. It doesn't mean that I'm like interested in these big butt Instagram girls, it just means that like, listen, I wanted to be noticed by them. It, it feels nice to be noticed. Now, is it healthy? Probably not. No. It's the thing that you have to address on your own. Yeah. So circling back around, Patrick has commitment issues. I have commitment let's issues. talk about it. No, let's not talk about Why? it. Why? Because we're talking about chemo. Yeah, but you're I need to give people an update. We'll get back to that. This is called we derail. We're going to talk about Pat's chemo in a second. That's called a this tease. just in. Pat has commitment issues. Well, let's let's unpack that because I find that the most it's, interesting part of the therapy. But there's thing stuff that I'm not you... ready to talk about yet. Well, too late. You brought it up. You brought up the issues. Um, I just think that like you know, I've never really bought romance. Like I, it, it just never. It always seemed fake to me. It was almost like it was almost as fake as like a horror movie, like a ghost or something. Like like it was a made up thing that didn't really exist. Or I just wasn't that fascinated by it. Like, I never really, like, you know, I'd see it in movies and, like, rom-coms or, like, other movies. And I just would not be buying it, really. Right. And I don't really know. I'm starting to figure out where I think that came from. But In your life? Yes. Well, what do you think it, you think I think it it's just from? more from a, I just think Are that. You're going you to blame mom and dad? Kind of. All right. I mean, I don't want I'm to though. I'm not ready I'm to talk it. about this. <laughs> I'm not ready to talk. Well, about I remember. This. I remember being. I remember being super afraid to when we were in like fifth grade to like admit to mom that I had a girlfriend. Like, I don't know if that comes from the like the fear of maybe maybe I had to this like weird mama's boy thing where I thought she'd be disappointed in me. Like some sort of almost like a. Uh, what is it? A Norman well, Bates Norman kind of, Bates syndrome. You are kind of f- trained to feel like those feelings are wrong. You know what I mean? Like I as guess, a kid, are you? like you go to sex ed and it's like it's just like a like like yeah, yeah don't oh man you got that yeah like oh, don't express any that kid don't who, express that boner gland. Any kid who's been walked in on by their parents masturbating knows Have the you? feeling. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. What do you mean you're pretty sure? You you say you know. I'm trying to remember the actual occurrence and I can't actually. I can a hundred percent. I can hundred percent say that I haven't. Because oh, I didn't masturbate until I was 19. I think it was in the bathroom. Yeah, that's true. You were like out of the house by the time you were masturbating. See, I was... I was in college. I was... I was a grown-ass man. I was an experimenter. <laughs> uh, so you're saying it's the same feeling, though. So you just feel like you gotta just, hide everything. Yeah, you just gotta kind of hide it. Because I get that. But uh, so but here's my thing. But isn't there a level of certain... Um, like, uh, it's normal to want to hide sexuality to a certain extent for a little bit? Sure. Like, you don't want to be the weirdo that's way too outwardly 
sexually expressive as an eight year old. That's well, weird, and at right? those or times too, your hormones are crazy, so you're like sweating from all weird places, and you smell weird, smell funny, and you're like you get bo is real. Yeah, it's a real thing. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. What, 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 what oh, well, I was what getting else? you to talk about your commitment issues. Yeah, no, I know, I know. I, I don't know if it's. I'm not. I don't know if I have a theory yet that works. It's just. I, well, think I don't that, think there has to be one specific instance. I, I, the one thing I would say is there's probably things that influence you into feeling a certain way about commitment and about you know opening up and about. Uh, I'd say the finality of it is what it is. Sure. In my well, opinion. so here's in my opinion, it seems like. Anytime you're gonna you're gonna make a leap of something that could be permanent, you know, which is funny because I'm so afraid of tattoos. Yet I've made some pretty big life decisions that, Get well, I guess t- this is gonna change everything I'm doing for the rest of my life. And tattoos, I'm like terrified of. Get a tattoo. Which on the flip side, you are terrified of girlfriends and you have I tattoos. Have all kinds of useless tattoos. Right. It's like you're, never you're even, almost you're I, almost like that over the top the other way where you're like, who do I care if I tattoo yeah. myself? It's not like it's forever. So this is how I realized this was something that I came across in therapy that was fascinating. Um, we were talking about it and I remembered that the first time I ever got asked out on a date, I think I was in like third grade. The Carrie Mulcahy? Yes, it was. And the thing Nailed that I it. said to her, like, like she called, and they gave mom gave me the phone and was kind of like giggling because she like was friends with Mulcahy. Yeah, we knew like, the whole family. Colin yeah, was in my grade. Eddie so and she, Sean, I played basketball like, with. Like, you know, oh, they have a crush on each other. Like, uh-huh. or Carrie has. A crush oh, look on at that, people. Maureen. So I like took the phone to the bathroom and was like, "Hello," and she was like, "Hey, I just was wondering if you wanted to be my boyfriend." And my answer was, "Sure, maybe for a little while, but I can't be your boyfriend forever." That's well, a third grader. Yeah, I'm afraid but, of. I was afraid of commitment in third grade. I was like, "Well, I can't date you forever." I mean, but that's true, though. That I you know. can't be boyfriend forever. You, at some point in time, you have to be. I'm in third to, grade, you have to propose or yeah, become a, or you're, people are going to nail you for commitment issues. Then, like, you could have a girlfriend for thirty years. People are like, really? I don't think we ended up dating either. No, of, of course you did. She was like, well, "What does that mean?" I was like, "Well, I just can't be your boyfriend forever." Not, nah, not forever. Just yeah, for a maybe for a little while. Well, okay. So you had commitment issues since you were in third grade. Yeah. So you're working on those. What else do you think? Um, That's it. I'm just working on them. I'm just figuring out where they came from and deciding that I also just might not be a relationship person. Like, it's never been something that I've been, like, dying to, like, get married and, like, have a family. Don't you think that's kind of a cop-out, though? I don't know. Or do you know? I don't think it's for everybody. Relationships? Yeah. But but why? You just think that because you're in one. No. People in relationships always want to make single people be in relationships, too. No, no, no. They're just mad because single people are happier. No, I'm in a great mood. No, I, I have single people are always happy. Now nah, I'd be more miserable being single, to be honest. We got nobody pushing. I know right I'd be more miserable being single. Being in I a call the shots in my life. I do too. Being in a relationship is. Bullshit. Do you know how much freedom you have when you're in a relationship? I'm not beholden to any apps. I'm not like if I'm on a drought, it's because I haven't seen my girlfriend in a while. I have no like you have no excuse not to be getting laid. No all the time more liking for big you. butts or nothing. It's not healthy anyway. What am I liking big butts on Instagram for? Just insecure validity. Are you of, saying you don't like big butts? No, I unfollowed the big butts. Yeah, okay. you got to unfollow the big butts. It's unhealthy. I just uh, unfollowed the unlike, big butt on Twitter uh, a little bit ago. Unlike the big butt. Holly Yako from Phoenix, some reporter. I'm like, why do I even follow this person on yeah. Twitter? Like, what am I doing? Unfollow. Yeah. You're boring. Unfollow. Don't blame it on them. No, I'm not. It's not their fault. It's like, why though? I don't know you. Yeah, like, sure. it just seems like an unhealthy, like lurking, lurking situation. Um, I don't. Need I don't know what the long term answer is. I do know that my therapist has said she's like, hey. Hey, stop digging this. Hole. Bosworth is now sleeping in uh, Pat's buddy's bag. He's just like making his, just, and he's like a he's like, stinky He's like, listen, man, I've been sleeping all day, and I'm tired of sleeping, yeah. and I want to be on the show. Yeah, so does. I'm going to be on the show by walking opinions. around the room cleaning stuff. He's got some opinions. Or messing up stuff. Um, So I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to work on it. I don't know if it's something that I'm really going to work that hard on. I don't what? know if it's something that's that important to me. I don't know, man. I feel like the people I, who are, Brian wants me to be in a relationship for real bad. No, I, I don't. Really. I just, I, I think that. I think that it's easy. You, okay, here's the thing. When you hit a point in your life where you're like, okay, I I know like some of my problems. Here's one of them. Then sometimes it becomes too convenient to just accept that and be like, maybe I'm just not a relationship guy. Well, maybe you are. You're just afraid of a certain thing. Or maybe, maybe you think you aren't right now, but maybe in 35 years, you're going to want to you're going to wish that you would have gone back and been a little bit I more I will have realized that before 35 years. I mean, I might just be a late bloomer. I might just be like, it might just be like in my 40s. I'm like, oh, yeah, I get it now. But right now, I don't get it. It's like I see people spending all their time together, and it's like most of the time, it seems like they're annoyed of each other. No, nah, but I'm annoyed by, but that's that's, okay, that's unfair to say because I'm, an, 
Uh, we hung out with I hung out with you and Haroon yesterday, Haroon Ishrak, our friend, and I find you guys annoying numerous times throughout the day, as you find me That's annoying. That's fine, but then you That's can... That's part of being friends. But you can, like, be like, hey, screw you, you're annoying me, and then just, like, leave it at that, and you don't have to have a two and a half hour conversation and then go to couples Look, counseling you, you, and you don't have to do all that why see you're doing the carrie mulcahy thing you're going into this relationship in your mind you don't even have thinking i can't be with you forever already i know. You haven't even talked to her yet i know the fake girl this person that doesn't, doesn't exist. even exist yet I know. and you're already coming to the reasons why you're going to be miserable with her at brunch on a Brian, sunday listen there's plenty of fish in the sea and <laughs> none of them are for me <laughs> There's <laughs> plenty of fish in the sea, and you're already you're already talking about you're gonna throw your pole yeah. in there, and Moby Dick's gonna That's swallow right. your boat. That's right. Plenty of fish in the sea. I don't like seafood, so you know what? Screw. <laughs> you do like seafood. You thought you didn't like I it did. growing up, and then all of a sudden you realize you do like. And it. And then one day I changed, and I like seafood. Again. So there we go. Um, so Pat's gonna like Pat's gonna like being so in relationships not, like he likes crab. Yeah, I'm gonna not work on my commitment issues. <laughs> Let it happen when it happens. I, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. It's like if I feel like all of a sudden, like I need someone in my life, and you know, and or 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 you know, whatever. Like, but right now it just doesn't. I have no. I've like not a whole lot of or like whatever. In like being is a in strong, in like, strong argument. Yeah, or like whatever. Or like whatever. Dude. Or like whatever. Or like, I could just be single forever. Uncle yeah, Pat, or like man. Whatever. Oh, don't I seem like nah, an Uncle Pat? Yeah, but un- no, no, no. I Uncle seem like Pat an Uncle gets Pat. weird. Uncle Pat gets weird single for too long. You need Uncle to have Pat gets too to honest to the you. kids and starts crying about being lonely. <laughs> you just realize that times like there's just I think the longer you're single, the less the less accountable you have to be to other people. I know it's awesome. No, no, because eventually you start to think to your then you start to get weird. Where you're like, what's the point? We're all gonna die anyway. And that's like not a good headspace to be it's in true. at fifty. It's not a good headspace to be it's in at fifty. True, that's a good one to be at ninety, eighty five. When you're like, who cares? This is why I'm going to try crack. I'm going to smoke crack now in my 80s. Well, I'll tell you one person who's not going to die. It's me because I'm invincible. I'm now turning this back towards the cancer update. All right, you're going to give us the rest of the game. But see, that's how you do long, That's how you do radio, Pat. Look, we derailed for a while. Okay, now you reset. You can finish your cancer update. Yeah. Boop, 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 TSL, boop, boop. we got people listening, buddy. Yeah. We, we derailed to talk about your, your Commitment internal issues. conflict. Jesus. Yeah. Right, I'm a mess. If, in case anybody like with that stuff, at least your cancer is curable. Yeah, it's well, and so here we go. So there's that's that's where we're at. With, <laughs> is that a good prognosis that's for really you? Great out of segue. all your problems, at least the cancer yeah. is fixable. Hey, is I your beat, is your therapist said that to you? Yet? I, I beat cancer, but relationships are too hard for me. <laughs> I can beat cancer, but I can't just commit to a Valentine's Day thing. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. It's all right, let's much. get this update. Um, well, basically, the update is. You know, before we went in, before I started chemotherapy, they had already removed the five and a half centimeter tumor that was in my colon. And so, but, that was, but they had other nodes, like nodes and stuff. Well, like so that. yeah, there was also 23 lymph nodes in that section of colon. And in one of the lymph nodes and the lymph channels around that lymph node, there was cancer. Yeah. So that means that the cancer was in my blood. So the chemo, so they take the cancer out because people keep asking me if I'm in remission Mm -hmm. and I don't really know how that applies to me. Can you be in remission until you've been like, I don't, I have to hit a certain year point. Well, and sometimes that's like when you have a tumor and it starts to get smaller and shrink and die. You know what I mean? Like my tumor is already gone. So basically the cancer that they're trying to kill is invisible. It's it's the ones that spread. Yes. It's to make sure that the cancer that's already in my blood doesn't start grabbing onto things like my liver and my lungs. Before I went in to start chemotherapy, before I did the um, surgery and everything, they did a CAT scan, and they didn't see any other cancer anywhere else. So basically, I went into surgery with cancer just in my colon. They took that out, and the chemotherapy has been more preventative than anything else to make sure that any cancer that's still alive inside my body, in my bloodstream, is going to be killed. And if anything's grabbed on, the smaller ones, it should be able to eliminate that as well. That said, I still have to get a CAT scan to know that something else isn't. So going uh, basically, on. It, like nothing could be fixed. There, there's no Ostensibly, way. Sensibly, I don't. I mean, they have to go scan you yes. to find out you don't have cancer. Yes, to be able to tell me that I've, you know, that that the cancer hasn't spread already or hadn't spread already, basically. Yeah. Because six months, it might have grown enough for them to see. They might not have just been able to see it before. They did see the lymph node though. Like, they could tell that there were some abnormalities around the lymph node. So okay. uh, they can see it when it's really small. So basically, the update is, after this, I should be able to say that I'm cancer-free. 
but I still well, need to get a colonoscopy. Right? I don't know if I would say that. The rules I don't know what the if rules someone knows are. the rules. If someone knows the rules to finishing cancer, mood please, points and yeah. at Pat Mood. Yeah. What are the rules? Someone's gonna tell you the rules. Somebody's got to be able to know. Someone's gonna tell you. I feel like people who. Um, you're in like an exclusive club now of cancer survivor. Mm-hmm. Well, almost in that club. Almost. You're 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 right. You're yeah, right. I don't like to call my shot when it comes to this. So. Nah, you don't want to get ballsy on this one. No. It feels like bad luck to be yeah. like, to be calling survivor before you can like legitimately put that uh, patch on your on your sash on your accomplishment sash. Who's wearing a sash? I don't know. I was just trying to come up with a you know like uh, when you're in the brownies, you get like a sash for or a. A patch for being able to basket weave. It's kind of like that for life. You get a cancer survivor patch survivor on your patch. life sash. I'm going to get a tattoo. On your life sash. Tweet at me some tattoo ideas for what, a cancer survivor. Why, well, why do you just want to get... Oh, you, you want to get a cancer survivor? Yeah. But what about that ribbon? Is there a ribbon for every type of cancer? I think the ribbon is for every type of cancer. It's different colors and sure, things for like every, that. Yeah, it's is also, there the one ribbon's just also for, for like the veterans and stuff like that, too. Well, the ribbon, yeah, I guess it's different colors for everything. Yeah. So you don't even have breast cancer. You don't want to do a pink ribbon. No, no, no pink you're, ribbon. Maybe you could be a supporter. I think I just get a survivor ribbon. Just right. Survivor. Survivor! And blood all over it. Dripping That's blood. Sounds morbid. Make it dark. So next week, you'll have more information. Yes. We'll probably... There's a chance we're going to do... Killian comes into town. Younger brother for oh, the you, week. So he can grill you on your uh, relationship issues. I don't... He's not as dead set that... He's more like Pat can do whatever Pat wants. He'd probably almost agree with me and be like, yeah, Pat's not really a relationship. Well, that's not how you make a podcast for 40 minutes, now is it? Just to just just agree with Pat. Just say, oh, sounds good. We could could have knocked this out in seven minutes. Oh, that works, Pat. Good idea. But instead, I like to take us on tangents down mental health. Hey, Pat, live your life, you know? Just Just do you. Hey, should we go do something else? Let's go outside. Yeah, this is boring. Let's stop talking about it. So you'll have an actual update. <laughs> Killing will be in on the podcast. Killing will be in on the podcast Thursday. Um, update. I won't really have. I'm not going to do any of those other tests, like the colonoscopy and the CAT scan. I'm not going to be doing those until probably like March. Yeah, I got to do one of those too. In like March. In March. Yeah, you do need to do one of those. Let's talk about that. Why I, are you so afraid of the doctor? I'm man? not. I don't. I'm not afraid of the doctor. I don't know how to navigate the health insurance system. I've sent them angry emails to Mercer Marketplace. The health insurance, I used to know how to do it. I used to be with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas, and I, I nailed it. I could set up appointments and know how to go through their portal. Mercer Marketplace is god-awful. I don't know how it's the hell to set up appointments. It's like you're in, you're in the healthcare system, and you're in something that's called a marketplace. That, that's the, that's, it's that's, insane. That's the structural well, also that's, But that's how they – I keep sending them emails like, hey – your, your portal's garbage. I need help with doing this. And guess what I get back? Reply, nothing. Because they don't want to help you because that costs them money. They want what they want for corporate insurance. But they want your company to pay forever and you never do anything and just to drop dead so that they never have to pay any money. Yeah. You just drop dead at, you know, at a certain time and you paid into the system for all these the years and you've never used it one insurance time. Insurance makes out like bandits based on people's fear of the doctor. I've started to get... I don't want to say irrationally annoyed, but I know people in the financial management investing game. I know people in the insurance sales game, and I always feel like they're going on vacations and spending all this money, but it's like you're making money off my money in theory. Yeah, and I don't want you using my money to like, go on so many va- – and if you're, how are you making so much money off my money that you can go on all these vacations? Right, like, Is my money entire, worth that much money? But it's not just like go on personal vacations all you want to. I'm not going to tell you how to make the money – spend the money that you make. But when your company is like, hey, we're going to do a retreat in Cancun, and I'm like, wait a minute. You work in the insurance business. Shouldn't you be kind of turning that around and passing that, that profit back to the people who you bilk out of thousands of dollars every year for Brian. health? When spending one someone else's money, it's important to take care of oneself. <laughs> pamper, well, pamper yourself. On it's other important money. when you're spending other people's money not to give a rat's ass when they are like, "Hey guys, can we all go to this all inclusive?" That's all I want, man. Give me the invitation. Why the yeah, hell can't no, I, I know. go? Why can't you guys go? You guys are basically part of the whole thing. Yeah, I'm basically a Blue Cross Blue Shield partner. So when they have their annual retreat down in Cabo San Lucas. Why that? Where the hell is my It would be like all the executives for a team showing up for the Super Bowl parade and Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski are all back at home like, we didn't get the invite. Yeah, what the hell? They didn't invite us. I thought this was based on us. We're the ones making all the money. bringing all the money. And you guys go ahead and spend it. Just trash. Big spenders. Fix that system, guys. We all want to go to Cabo San Lucas. We all want to go. Come on, man. All expenses paid. You know what? To be honest, I would rather go to Cabo once a year than even go to the doctor. 
Because at least if I'm going to die, I'm going to do it in Mexico 19 margaritas deep. See, I wish I had a financial planner. I don't have enough money. Well, isn't the grass always greener on the other side, Pat? They can go on all the vacations they want for all I care. It's not my money. <laughs> well, I guess it's not. I don't know. Good. All right. That's it for us. We'll uh, try and get another one up this week. Oh, um, we will. Whether Pat's sick or not, I'll just oh. grill Killian about his relationship issues. There we go. The music's out, so we have to stop now. Fair. And now, a thought from Geico Motorcycle. It took 15 minutes to take a spirit animal quiz online. Please be the cheetah. Please be the cheetah. And learn your animal isn't the cheetah, but the far less appealing blobfish. Oh, come on. To add insult to injury, you could have used those 15 blobfish minutes to switch your motorcycle insurance to Geico. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance.